introduce myself because I was in such a bad mood that morning. Hi, hello, my name is Katie. I'm a transfer student at UC Berkeley. I study anthropology and archaeology, and I'm currently a senior. I'm also a transfer admissions consultant for Accepted Consulting, where I help students get into their dream university, so go ahead and check the links below for that, and let's get into the video. So, I'm actually running late right now. This morning, it's Thursday. I have a class across the street from north side of campus and I live down on south side. My class starts at 9.30, it's currently 9.05 so I'm just running behind. But while I put on my shoes, I wanted to talk to you guys. I was planning on just doing a regular old day in my life today but one of the things about having ADHD is that it's often a cause of anxiety and depression and it's also cyclical and it's also really impacted by your hormone fluctuations if you're a person who gets a period. So, I'm like in that perfect storm right now of like week before my period, so my ADHD is flaring up really bad, which is making me feel anxious and also making me feel a little bit depressed. So I'm kind of having a hard time at the moment just in feeling happy and satisfied right now. And I don't wanna hide that, let other people know that it's something that happens. It's making it very difficult to feel engaged with school, which sucks because it's only like week three and I'm already at this point and I really don't wanna be here. I'm hoping it goes away. I know that it goes away, it's cyclical, it goes and it comes, but I also thought I would show you like under normal circumstances, I might have a little bit of a messy house because of the ADHD, like a pile of clothes or some dishes in the sink. Right now, the only reason why my kitchen is clean is because I manically cleaned it yesterday because I was filming a TikTok in there. But right now, the rest of my house is a huge effing mess. So I don't feel great about it and I'd really like to get it cleaned up at some point, but I'm doing my best. My homework's getting done. I am fed, I am rested, that's all I can ask for right now. Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you even though it's a little vulnerable and scary. It's now 9.10 and class starts in 20 minutes. It's like a 30 minute walk, so yeah, let's get going to, let's get going to campus. going to film like a cool intro to me coming into the house but I had to capture how freaking fluffy my hair is before it deflated because it always gets a little fluffy the day after I wash it but it's also so freaking humid outside today and before all of you east coast people come at me listen I'm from the central valley and I now live in the bay area so please forgive me if I think it's humid I'm also out of breath because I just walked up the stairs I'm home. I'm in a much better mood than I was when I left, um, mostly because like my meds are actually working today. Class was super engaging. It was like a class discussion and not a lecture, so that was awesome. And it was actually just more engaging than all of my other seminar classes were. And then I had two friends stop and want to talk to me after class, and I talked to them for like an hour outside of class, and I'm like, that's what is supposed to happen in college. So it was very exciting, but now I'm home. I'm here with my fiance. Hi, I'm the fiance. Oh really, are you now? Do you have anything to say That's to the vlog? Don't you drive these kids. <laughs> So it's 12.30, almost 12.40, and I have an online meeting at 2, and then I have class again at 3.30. So I'm gonna go ahead and make something to eat for lunch. I'm gonna cool down, because it's really freaking hot. And then I'm going to do my readings for my seminar class that I haven't done yet. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And yeah, let's get to it, because I only have like an hour-ish until I have to be at that meeting, so.
unfortunately just got incredibly distracted by watching and making TikToks and have not finished my reading, but I have a meeting to go to in like nine minutes. It's for the transfer mentorship program at Berkeley, which pairs up a continuing transfer student with a new transfer student as a way of building community and welcoming them to the campus. I am all about transfer pride and transfer representation, as we all know. So I'm excited about this program. I don't know how I'm going to manage to keep everything that I'm doing like managed since we all know I'm very bad with time management, I have ADHD, I'm just learning and trying to figure out how to deal with it. But right now on my plate I have three classes, the transfer mentorship, I'm doing an undergraduate research apprenticeship program position through school, and then I also have my YouTube channel, and then I also have my accepted consulting work, so I feel like the embodiment of that TikTok sound that's like Listen, I can't give any more information, but I feel that I may have grow boss a little bit too close to the sun right now because I just have like so many things going on, but um, I'm setting up for my meeting and then I thought I would tell you guys what we've been talking about in class lately. Today's paleopathology class, like I said, was super engaging and really interesting because we've been talking about like bioethics and like the ethics of doing this bioarchaeological research and how it impacts descendant communities and so on and so forth. And it was really interesting and we had a big conversation today, mostly centering around like who gets access to these remains, who gets access to the data. And then we we're also talking a lot about fictive bio narratives or fictive bio archaeological narratives i can't remember exactly what it is but it's essentially taking this data and then creating a story about who the person was and their experiences in life um a fictive narrative and i personally think that fictive narratives are a little bit harmful because while we all know that research is biased writing a narrative is also extremely biased because it's fake and it's coming from that person's point of view and disseminating that to a wider audience when you're giving them things from like maybe an ableist perspective or from a white perspective instill an image of what these ancient peoples were doing in a broader audience who don't think critically about these things. So for example, Ancient One Arkenoic Man is one of the oldest found skeletons in North America, and the person who is supposed to be the expert on that case, throw in a throwaway comment kind of way, said that he was Caucasian, and people took that and ran with it, when in, in reality, that skeleton, through like ancient DNA analysis, belonged to a very specific still living descendant indigenous community today. Then in my museum class we're talking about, then in my museum class we're talking about museum exhibits and cultural representation, so we're talking about exhibiting other people's culture, working with source communities, which is new vocabulary for me, source community is essentially the uh, community from which these artifacts come from or the descendant communities from which these artifacts come from that are found in museums, and the way that museums themselves are being restructured and the, the institution itself and the, the status quo are being challenged in order to have a more collaborative and non-patronizing, non-institutionalizing, inaccessible form of disseminating knowledge through museums and being respectful of and acknowledging the fact that these artifacts are coming from a group of people who have been marginalized and, um, what's the word for violence? <laughs> suffered a lot of violence at the hands of colonialism. So yeah, today I was reading the introduction from a book called Museums and Source Communities and talking about like the way that those relationships develop between museums and source communities and like the difficulties that come with it and so on and so forth. I hope you guys are following. I'm sorry for my energy right now. I'm just feeling a lot better than I was this morning and I'm reveling in it. That's what I'm studying today. I have to go to this meeting now in a couple of minutes and yeah. We're doing good.
Jenny, who's a little camera shy, so we won't force her to be on camera. We just got out of our museum class and we're gonna go study in the library. We both have an assignment due tonight. We have to do a whole reading of an article that I haven't even touched yet, so that's where we're headed and I'll check in later. <laughs> Everybody, it is almost 8 o'clock at 7.45. As I, you hopefully saw, uh, after class I hung out with my friend Jenny for a little bit. We went to the library to work on an assignment that's due tomorrow. And then we went to the Free Speech Cafe, which I hadn't been to yet. I got a tea. Now it is my Friday night. I don't have classes on Fridays, not yet at least. I should have like studio hours later on in the semester to work on a project for my museum class. But for now I do not have classes on Fridays, so it is technically a Friday night for me. I am exhausted and very hungry and I still have to finish that assignment so my plan for the night is to make a sandwich, eat while I watch some TV, and then I'm gonna get back to finishing the reading for my assignment and then probably like write an outline for my assignment and then finish writing it tomorrow and then submit it. I also have to edit this video because Long story short, I do not have my SD card that has all of my footage from last week's vlogging, so I had to buy an SD card reader last second because mine broke, so I could pull the footage off of the SD card I'm using right now so I would have space to film a vlog today, as it's Thursday and I have videos that go up on Fridays typically, so I had to do like a problem solving thing and decided to vlog today so I could get you guys a video. That is the plan, I'm gonna eat and relax for a minute, finish my reading, write an outline, edit a video. I've done my reading, I wrote my outline, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video, call it a night. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, tell me which of the buildings in the b-roll footage is your favorite from campus. Mine, personally, is South Hall, but if you've watched any of my videos, you already know that. Um, subscribe for more UC Berkeley vintage archaeology related content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.